Hello, parents. The holidays are here. Oh, the smells, the presents, the family, the music, the the aroma of just coming together to be thankful and to bring family together to celebrate things that we have. I can understand why for many people, this is their favorite time of the year, Jordan. Dude, I love the holidays like oh, yeah. as soon as the radio station switches over to christmas music i'm on there the entire season yeah i don't know why it yeah. brings joy to my life yeah. and that's all that matters yeah. i'm the kind of guy who will get in an argument about why i think the christmas tree should go up before thanksgiving oh you are <laughs> you are before oh right. my gosh like let's skip right to it bro like if i could decorate my house with yeah. like these orange Halloween lights that then just change to oh, the Christmas color. They like, probably, I'd be, I need to I'd be all that. for it. You know, I that's know. becoming more cultural normal because before there was that strict kind of cultural rule. No, no Christmas stuff until after right. Thanksgiving. And now there's a lot of people who are like, you know, I don't care what you say. I'm going right. to Christmas trees. I'm getting started early. And, and I can see why, because it just brings out so much positivity and not everybody, but in so many of us, it's like, it's just a great time of year. It's a great time of year. You got feel good movies out there like oh, Buddy the Elf. Good. Hey, it's Buddy the Elf. What's your favorite color? Uh, uh -huh. These toilets are ginormous. Like it just makes you feel good. Like the idea of like family getting together. Think Home Alone. The family's gone and they try to get oh, yeah. to together and they get together on Christmas Day, right? You've got Thanksgiving night. You're having a big meal. You're just with everyone you love and it yeah. can be fun. And yes, I know it brings up some painful memories for some, but in that perfect world, which I think yeah. a lot of us think of the holidays is that perfect world. It's I glorious. I think that's really a big part of why we're making this episode is what you just said. It's that perfect world that what do we, what happens in our minds? Because, you know, do you know who sings this song? It's the most wonderful, <laughs> wonderful time, time of the year. <laughs> It's the half, half. Do you know who sings that song? No, no, I just oh, yeah. love that song. Andy Williams sings that song. And for many people, that's true. And I'm, if that's you, I'm really happy for you. But there's many of us, and I'm going to share some stats on this, that it is not the happiest time of year. You're in a, it's like, it just brings up fear, brings up emotions. Maybe you're in a tough co-parenting situation. Maybe you, it reminds you of the loss of somebody you've had in your life. I don't know if you are aware of this, but like it brings up a lot of challenges for people. I really wasn't as aware until I started researching for this episode. Yeah. And you know, those challenges could probably be financial challenges. When you say you lost a loved one, I know it can be hard for someone who has lost a loved one and you see yeah. all your family together and then you realize that loved one's not there, which makes yeah. it that much more difficult. Or you're in a broken family and you can't be there this year for, with your kids because, you know, it, they're going with this, you know, the, the, the other um, yeah, part yeah. family member for that, for yeah. that holiday. But it, I try leading up to it to paint this great picture Okay. And every year the reality comes where I get so frustrated, which we'll get to, but it's like, we all want right. it to be perfect. We do. I know I do. I, we first shoot it. And I, I don't know why. I wonder it's because either A, we had these awesome childhood memories as kids and now we want to pass that on to our kids. Or maybe we didn't have positive childhood Christmas memories, holiday memories, and now we want to create something new. I don't know. Everyone's got a reason, but I know this is that for many of us, it is a very, very stressful time of year. Now, here's what I just thought of. Um, I don't know if you're aware of this, but Amazon and Target and probably Walmart too, they send out these big catalogs to like so many homes around the world. Have you ever got one of these holiday gift catalogs? From well, I mean, I mean, now they, I've never seen Amazon's, but like Tractor Supply, I'm probably on their list. Or <laughs> I ha you know, it's so because I'll shop there sometimes. Yeah. Walmart. Yeah, I do. I usually just toss them though. I don't let them. No, they're, like they're that, pretty. That's. Oh, That's you a don't. For disaster. I realize now that this is looking back. My, we've never, t I've never talked about this with one of my kids. But when my kids are older, they're going to be talking about how much joy these catalogs brought them. Because I realized, without even realizing it until now, my family has a tradition where we hand these kids um, these catalogs and we let them circle the toys that they want, yes. and they will go through and they'll circle like you know, potentially 50 to a hundred toys. And then of course we have to go back and we have to tell them, you know, okay, now you got to really narrow it down, but this has got to right. be really fun for even a kid just to use their imagination, you know, yeah. to, to do this. And then now Amazon has these, you know, for teenagers. Now my, my kid, my older teens, I got two teenagers, they've graduated from those catalogs and now they have this Amazon wish list, and that's gotta be oh a, a fun goodness. thing. 
No, just put your put your. You know, this is like a thing. Like, do you don't use those Amazon wish lists? I I do no. it throughout the year, man. I'll be like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna heart this, and this is part of the fun, just imagining these gifts and what we're gonna get. And but, what do you think about that? I just think that like, it's that that could maybe be one of the reasons why it's so hard on so many people yeah. because there's this expectation that like mm -hmm. i'm gonna get these gifts or if i don't get these gifts and my friend gets yeah. one now there's a jealousy there and then from the parents perspective it's like well now i have to because they really want yeah. it even though it's the thousand dollar playstation oh. 6 that just came out or the iphone 500 exactly. and it can just be really hard yeah and some of the stuff they circle let's be honest i mean they don't even play with them longer than a day you oh, know well, so that... it's like I just posted something on Instagram the other day where they were, they were, you know, with with the box that the the toy came into. They were playing with the box for like six hours. <laughs> oh, I can just get you a box. What am I doing here? That stress you out the idea of you buying a present for your kids and then not and then not using it or not playing it. No, but... it doesn't stress me out. It just makes me frustrated. It, it for me, it's like we've got a problem with stuff and. Oh, we have storage stuff and it's mm -hmm. like we don't need any more yeah. stuff yes so stuff. if you really want it right. i'm trying to go back i'm trying to get my family to go back to just like one gift oh yeah per person yeah the one well, gift you know you're going to use i'm okay with that a lot of families are moving towards that and that's really wise let me give you a quiz okay let me i'm going to quiz you here's a step here's there's we're gonna there's a few handful of reasons that the holidays really stress people out and if it doesn't stress you out then listen to this episode so you can learn more about your fellow man and your fellow member, fe fellow family member. Okay, the American Psychology Association found that more people in the United States find their stresses increases rather than decreases during the holiday season for a variety of reasons. What were their reasons, Jordan, of what brings up stress? What do you think they are? Money. Number one, ding, ding, ding. Good answer, good answer. Number one reason is lack of money for gifts. Stress us um, adults out. What else? What about like, um, like family, like getting together family with, you don't really want to get together. With I was surprised like that. that did, that did not make their top list, but we are going to be really? chatting about that in this episode because huh. okay, that is uh, for many what about, people. Uh, well, I would say work. Like some people are shift workers and they don't get Christmas off. So that could be stressful. Didn't make the top list, but yep. That's a good point. Yep. Well, so what's next on the list? Okay, well, next up, lack of time to shop and cook. Really? That's yeah. on the list. Yeah, well, you're no, you're not a, uh, maybe, I mean, yeah, do you, lack of time you're a, to you're a, you're a cook. working parent, so uh, you don't normally do a lot of the cooking and the shopping in your home, do you? Yeah, I cook every night. Okay, my bad. I do. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Well, but what I'm saying is, I didn't realize that would be on the top of the list, but it makes sense. Some people work in two jobs, and so they don't have time to go out and shop. And then, of course, if they can't figure out the time to shop, then there's going to be no Christmas presents under the tree because well, the fat man maybe isn't coming to town. Right. Also, I mean, what if you think about it, what makes the holidays really, really special? Like, is it just sitting around, like, uh, playing patty cake? Or is it really just being around with your family, enjoying a nice meal, talking, maybe opening up some presents? So isn't it's like... That's what's, that's what's creating, the right? Stress. That's what's okay. creating because people want this. I remember it was like, uh, I think it was about a year ago today. My wife just made this incredible, incredible Thanksgiving in, um, spread for our family. And it was so tasty and she was exhausted. She was spent the whole day cooking. And then after we ate, you know, the meal lasts, what, 30 minutes, 45 mm -hmm. minutes, because we're eating all day already. And she's right. just exhausted. And she's like, you know what, I don't know if I want to do this next year. Like, that for her, that just wasn't the way she wants to be grateful on Thanksgiving, just cooking right. and thinking. All right. Any other guesses well, of what? Well, think of, so now that you're talking about cooking, I'm thinking of like how awful we feel after we eat these big meals. And then, of course, you go into the New Year's and your New Year's resolution is to lose 15 pounds. Oh, my so, gosh. Well, hey, you like, just hit, you just hit one. You hit one. Uh, what that stresses people one? out? The stress of staying on a diet or the, the yeah. food, the food intake. And then the other one that's listed here on this list is the overwhelming. I know you'll have something to say about that. This, the overwhelming commercialism and the hype of the holiday. Well, think people about out. old school Black Friday. Remember when you'd have to go there at midnight Gosh. after Thanksgiving, wait in line. <laughs> 
for hours in the cold. They yeah. opened the door at 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. and then it was 3.30 a.m. Oh, and then it was 3 a.m. Yeah. And then you'd rush in I and someone that. always gets yeah. trampled I and heads to the hospital. Yeah. yeah. The fights, like that is yeah. mad chaos. <laughs> but what is the term? It's Black Friday. They're trying, right. these, these stores are trying to get back into the black because all year yep. they've been in the red. Yep. And so they're banking on us to go crazy to consume yep. to get back into the black. One survey said that one third of Americans wish that Black Friday would go away. Yep, because it just it just even if you think about it too, it's just the the holiday season. It's for different traditions, different you know uh, spiritual or religious backgrounds aren't they're primarily built around gratitude or spirituality or gratefulness. Right. We're and so here we are. The first day after Thanksgiving has now become you know, a shopping day, commercial consumerism. And, and this is why it's very empowering for, for me to even say this because, you know, our kids are going to be our kids by nature or nurture. So we can't control many past aspects of their lives so who they become, how they think. We cannot control your child, but you can't control yourself. But we can control the nurturing environment in the house. So if we want to create Black Friday to be about consumerism, and buying things we can do that but if we want to create the first day of the holiday as some other day we can do that if we also want to make black friday it's just a great family day where you go out shopping and enjoying your family you know that's that's cool too right yeah like we get yeah. to create the families we want because we're parents are so powerful and that's great and we you know my family personally we never really got into the black friday craze i remember one time when i was a kid mm -hmm. i had a successful uncle um and i i asked him when i was a kid i said hey what does it take to be successful and and he was kind of well off he owned his business he had several employees and he yeah. says number one always do your best to save money right mm -hmm. every paycheck do something where you're paying yourself and number two don't jump into the craze that you're seeing on tv that you're hearing from society oh, the these deals because yeah. i was talking in that moment about mm -hmm. this deal on black friday he's like you cannot be right. jumping into that because then you are now becoming a pawn in their game you've got oh, to take yeah. control of your own right, right. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, because it makes us sign. We're just we're getting a deal. It's on sale, but check it out. Right. There's a survey from this company called Sesame, and they found on their website that two in five Americans feel their mental health worsens during the holidays. And their study the year before that said three in five Americans, their mental health goes down. So what is going on? Andy Williams says this is the most harmful time of the year. <laughs> and and Terrible. but the research is like about half of Americans are saying, I'm just this actually is bringing out the worst in me. This is stressing me. And then if mental health is going downwards, well, then what's going up? Is alcohol going up? Is screen right. going up? Is uh, is verbal abuse going up? Is screen abuse going up? Is food abuse going up? Is uh, fighting in a, in a marriage or in a home going up? Like, it's this, we got it. This is why we're making this episode. We got a problem. And you know what? We kind of saw a problem like this during during COVID when everything was shut down, where the, all these stories were coming out, where families were getting yeah. mad at each other. I wonder, are we spending too much time together? <laughs> so we're all like <laughs> in a close space in this yeah. tiny house because we don't want to get a hotel right. and we're all getting crazy. Right. Right. I got just one more stat for us. Then we'll talk about, we'll talk about something else. All right. So a website called verywellmind.com. Tell me your thoughts on this. Found that one in five parents believe that their child has unrealistic expectations for the holidays. While one in four admit that they set highly unrealistic expectations of themselves during the season. All right. You want me to repeat that? What do you think about that? Yeah. Reveal. One in five one parents. In five. Go ahead. One in five parents believe their child has unrealistic expectations for the holidays. Okay. While they admit one in four parents are have highly unrealistic, unrealistic expectations of themselves during this season. What are your thoughts? on I don't that? know what that means from a parent's perspective, but I can't blame kids for having this expectation. You know, we watch these holiday movies and we expect things. We hear our, our, our friends yeah. at school talk about what they're going to be doing. So we expect maybe a big ski trip, but I mean, that that's just it that's in the kids world you know that's it's just around them so they expect that because they think it's the norm yeah what is the norm though right what, what is the norm is exactly the norm, right that's why this is just like i think this i'm just saying it again i just said it maybe this is why we're making this episode it's like these kids get these 
you know, these little catalogs from Amazon, Target, and Walmart. And it's like this holiday gift guide. This is going to be kind of like some sort of holiday survival guide to just help us be mindful and wise about how we want to lead our families during this right. holiday season. Because here's another negative stat. All right. One in five parents note that their stress levels are negatively impacting their child's enjoyment of the holidays. Yeah. Well, I was probably there at one point. Sorry about that, <laughs> <laughs> I get so mad sometimes on Christmas morning. Oh, you they do. Uh, they do. Let's let's each tell Calm one down. story about that because I got I got a I, I want to tell me a story. You want me to go first? It's just, and and this goes into more of the psychological idea of, mm -hmm. of parenting and co-parenting children, yeah. which we'll get into. It's like, yeah, I don't think my wife had you know a robust Christmas holiday, so mm -hmm. she didn't get a ton of presents so she wants to shower her okay. kids with gifts yeah. that's one of her love languages okay right yeah and to me yeah. i look at that and then they turn into these little greedy grandmas yes. like what's next what else oh this is what you got me what else right. did you get me what else what and i just get frustrated right that's like, the co-parenting right? even in a marriage in a healthy marriage like yours it can bring up emotions and fears and that would make sense that your wife danny would want to shower her kids with right. presents did she have any siblings growing up she's an only child she basically, you know, she had a couple half brothers, but she never spent the holidays with them. Yeah, so she, so was she wasn't around this big child. family. Like right. my wife too. My wife's an only child, so I, there, we don't. She doesn't need any reasons to want to bless our kids with a bunch of presents around Christmas time. This is what she wants to do. But yeah, if yeah. somebody who's you know more financially conscious or restricted, it was very scary. It's stressing me out. It's like you know, yeah. Past. And it's just it's hard to see that. And and when I look at like a family on Thanksgiving. And they're donating their time mm, at the shelter, yes. feeding others. I'm like, that's a cool experience yeah, because then that awakens the kid's eyes as to like, hey, we don't always get to have a big, huge turkey and family. Mm. Not everybody gets that. Yes. Yeah, that's good. It's like – and I, I think even what I said a few – twice in this episode already might have even add more stress to some parents. So when I say like, hey, we get to set the tone – for the culture of our homes around the holidays, you could take that. And I think somebody could be pretty empowered by that. But could you also see how that sentence can actually really stress some parent out? Can you see? Well, why? Because they don't feel like they can. Uh, yeah. That's one reason. Yeah. Like, or they're stressed that they, you know, have to do that and they don't want yeah. it. Yeah. Or maybe they're like, I just did a bad job of it. Or maybe like, or right. Or maybe like, I yeah, tried. It doesn't I work. tried my, or my, you know, um, or my co-parent is sabotaging this or is this so common? I mean, the holidays brings up so much pain for parents of divorce and who are mm. They can't be with their kids or their other parent is like, you know, letting them abuse screens during the holiday or their other parent is just like over showering them with gifts or they just want to go with this one parent because maybe they have more money or they have bigger family or mm -hmm. it's just like there, it's more fun over there. And they're like, what about me? I, what about me? I want to be seen. I want to, I want to be with you. Right. It's just very painful for some parents. And I don't even know how to address that because it's hard in divorce situations where you mm -hmm. have to share custody and mm -hmm. you get them Thanksgiving. I get him Christmas. Okay, well, the rule right now is he's off tech. He was bad at school. And then the other parent's like, well, no, I got you a new iPhone for Christmas. Right. That's got to be really hard to try and figure that out and to find that balance. Yeah, it is. And that's why I enjoyed that episode that we recorded with your dad because your dad gave us a lot of wisdom about co-parenting and divorce. So if you are in that situation, make sure you go back and listen to that episode. It was called Divorce and Co-Parenting with Jordan's Dad. That's what I called it. <laughs> it's an eye-opening, especially from my no, perspective. It was good. But hey, man, we're here to in, in educate, to equip, to inspire. And so Jordan and I have got five tips for you and action steps. And I think about this. These things, these are like gifts I want you to give yourself. I want you nice. to do these five things for yourself. And the first one is has to do with you doesn't have to do with your stinking kids. It has to do with you. It doesn't have to do with how you talk to your kids. It has to do with how you talk to yourself. So Jordan, let's talk about how we as parents can, number one, prep ourselves and our children for the holidays. What it means, what it's about, what it's not about, what, why we do it. What is this family about here? Parents are teachers and every home is a school. 
And so whether you do this in family meetings or you do this through one-on-ones or you do this just a few chit chats, you know, over the, uh, over the dinner table, I think it's really important that we prepare and teach our kids about what the holidays are and what they aren't. And I can give you firsthand experience that this already works. I mean, our family have been working really hard for the last year plus to try to go on a family trip, right? A big family trip. And we have one coming up. And anytime we go on a family trip, I'm very conscious. I want to make sure that we're doing things that are purposeful, that are going to create memories, and that's fun, and that's not going to completely break the bank and have us in debt for you know two years down the road. But there was a moment where we were getting the kids ready for what to do. What would they like to do on this trip? Okay. You know, and this is for this is going to be a big Thanksgiving trip. Do we want to celebrate Thanksgiving here? Do we want to have that meal? Mm. Um, and there was a moment where my wife looked at me and says, "Hey, this is a very important trip for me for this family, and so I want the expectations to be this." And I heard that, and I'm like, "Wow, I'm so glad you told me because I wouldn't have thought about that when oh, I was good. in the trip, yeah. and we, it could have caused a fight. It yes. could have caused a problem." During that trip. Yeah, just we don't want that. preventative communication, right? Really, really good. Right. I, and here's, here's another practical story that's not as you know dramatic as a big trip. But we went, Chris, we have a tradition where uh, we go to a Christmas tree lots up in yes. this cool area near our house. And we go Christmas tree shopping. And we, you know, been chopping down our own tree. I don't think we're going to, we're not going to do that this year because of last year. But here's what happened last year. My wife, Danielle, is very artistic and she's very uh, into beautiful things. And we Christmas tree shopped, I think, for over three hours last year, maybe four for the perfect what? tree. Yeah, we went to about five lots. And oh, that was with two teenagers, mom. a 75 year old mom, her mom, as well as a six year old child. And there was so much communication going on that day. And here's what the communication kind of sounded like. Hey, guys, this is a family day, but this is uh, special for mom. She really wants to find that special tree. So let's just all be patient with her. Let's enjoy this. Let's have some hot chocolate. Let's talk. You know, Kenzie was six. I put her on my shoulders quite a bit. So I was just sweating at times, you know. Right. And it was like, it was a big Donahue win because we didn't, the kids didn't complain. And we just had patience. But it was probably, it was a lot of it because we prepared them. Like, this is what this day is about. It's not just about yes. you. It's not about you. It's not just about Danielle. It's not about me. But we are up here doing this adventure. And we rocked it now. We're not doing that this year, though. We got a big tree now. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I can't believe you went to. Mo I would have lost it after the first job. I'm like, no, we're finding it here. I'm not going to. Another, that's that's amazing that you did that. Well, good that's job. well, yeah, good job to the kids because I think it's this is what expectations does. Expectation is like a little a little lying voice in our head. It's little it's a little devilish cartoon. It says this is the way it needs to be. I know what's best. I know what's best for everybody. And the expectations are the opposite of vulnerability. They're the opposite of teamwork. And they can really sabotage a beautiful thing, man. Like you take any beautiful thing, a vacation, a holiday, a gift, any, uh, a, a marriage, a mm -hmm. uh, child's behavior. And if you fill that mind, your mind with an expectation that's all janky, or you go up in some fantasy world of creating a Hallmark movie in your mind, or some fantasy you know, movie in your mind, and then the reality is not going to play out that way. And you just did that not only yourself, but you then you just are going to, create an issue for your family did i get too traumatic right. on that or is that kind of no no you're, you're you're absolutely right i'm just so impressed by your kids that that that's a lot to, to handle and I, I always get impressed too by by people who who do this but the fact that you're sharing this and then other people it, it works yeah. that this expectation this conversation um it really allows the kids to come into your thought process because a lot of the times they don't even know. Yeah. Like now, let's just say we're going on a, on a road trip. Yeah. My kids will want to ask how long it is. And sometimes I don't want to tell them because I know how long it can yeah, be. Yeah, buddy. But when I share it, I'm yeah. like, I know this is not going to be fun, but we're going to you know, do this and time's yeah. going by fast. And, and then it, it at least gives them perspective so yeah, they're not dude. just absolutely miserable. Shh. Here's here's holiday tip number two. It's actually kind of ironic because I just – I did the opposite of what I'm about to say. Ready? Number two, okay. create and keep traditions. Oh, we're breaking that. That's hilarious. <laughs> well, let me tell I have a good reason why. Um, I'll tell you in a second. I'll tell you another reason why. But 
um, isn't this, especially if you're a young parent, was it you? Okay. Go back to where well, you are a young parent, you know, your youngest was four. Um, I guess, I don't know if I'm a young, I'm definitely not a young parent anymore with an oldest child being, you know, almost, almost 19. But if you, when you were a young parent, right. And the first, your kids were, you know, five and under for the first time, cause you got twins. Was it you setting the tone for the traditions in your home or was it your wife or was it both of you? That's so funny. Um, I think it was my wife, but there were traditions that I liked and that I would want to do also. Okay. But I, now that I'm reflecting, there has been nothing that has stood the test of time. Oh, it's like, oh, yeah? oh, well, this is a tradition. It's like, well, it was for a couple of years and then we went away and now we're going to go back to it. You okay, know, or, okay. or this is a new tradition that we're starting this year. Yeah, like, yeah. Maybe we're doing it one time and we're calling it a tradition. Okay. It's something that nothing. We so home. nothing that lasted the test of time from anything. Then let me just tell you, let me tell you, one of my favorite memories of growing up is that my grandmother made these really beautiful, colorful stockings. And all of us kids had these like, they're just gorgeous stockings, right? They're like clearly from the eighties. I wish I could show you right now. I love my stockings, my sister's stockings, my parents' stockings. And so here we are. I want to, I want to have beautiful, colorful stockings for my kids. And guess what my wife said, guess what this Instagram influencer said. And she says, no, we're not doing colorful stockings. I said, Why? well, and so because our Christmas tree and our stockings are all like color based themed, right? Yeah. And so we change them out every like two years, three years. Oh. So they're very like artistic. <laughs> they're like Pottery Barn or whatever, Boho or whatever, you know what I mean? So right. dude, like the one thing I really cherish these beautiful, colorful Christmas trees with like a gazillion different colored, uh, uh, what are they, ornaments on there? Like we got, yeah. we got none of that, man. We have Dude, a beautiful tree though, but it's beautiful. Are you okay with that? Oh. Are you bummed? Some traditions no. you let go, it's, it's hard. No, I'm not bummed. I think I was bummed for the first few years because it was like, <laughs> but then I realized like this is marriage, right? It's compromise, it's marriage. working together. And in some battles, <laughs> like you can't win, man. Like when you have an artist wife like myself, like, you know, you can't win some battles. So right. I'm not going to, I'm not going to get divorced. I have, guilty con I have to confess something okay, with everybody it. right do now. It. I'm starting a tradition, which is probably not the healthiest. Okay. I'm going to tell you that right now. Last year, yeah. I was like, I think I'm going to make it a tradition. Yeah. Just on a whim. I can't wait to hear I'm what you're about to those, say. Yeah. Those lottery scratch offs. Oh yeah. And let the. Yeah, Dude, you know, those are fun. Off. Those are heck right? of fun. They're heck of fun. Dude. Like the Monopoly ones yeah. or you know, whatever. Yeah. And then they can see if they win. Yeah. But I did that one time. And now every time we're at the store, yeah. my son's like, hey, Dad, can we go to those scratches? I'm, like, oh, no. <laughs> I'm creating a yeah, game. Yeah, you are. In the making. You might have, dude. You might have. <laughs> have you ever gotten them those prank? This could be a good year. Maybe when they're a little oh, older. A maybe when they're one. old. Maybe when they're like older. 13. I'm wait till they're older. Yeah. yeah. I used to prank people those fake lotteries where you win. You can get them online where they scratch yeah. and they win like 20 grand. <laughs> so and terrible. then you see them freak yeah. out. And then it says in the back, you've been pranked. Oh. Yeah. I think you did that to me. I remember. Bring flashbacks of that when dude, I was a kid now. <laughs> dude, I did a lot of really – I took my prank – my prank life was so over the top, inappropriate. I did some things. I got in trouble. Uh, I All right. Let's – let's yeah. So any other things? I think um, that you all – traditions that um, carry on. I think for us, we – we uh, it might sound, you know, like not much to you guys, but one of our favorite traditions is we go to uh, my in-law's house just on Christmas Eve. And nice. it's just, there's just them too. And Beautiful. they just really make it a really nice meal. They decorate the whole house and yeah. they're just really good gift givers. So, you know, they're just generous and they bless the kids and they have this little, this little, this little, you know, horse that is a rocking horse and they have a little, uh, puppet set and they gave it to our oldest daughter when she was like three or four. And then it's just passed down to the next kid and the next kid. And I think when I think about holiday memories, that's something that I think about that puppet set. Cause it like lasts, cool. it lasts, you know, it's lasting for 10, 20 years. And I think if you, the people who are listening to this, if you think about like, when you think of Christmas, what do you think of? I think some people are thinking about these, these toys, those trains you bring out every year or those same, you know, those same platters of food or that same dish, right? And you got anything yeah. that comes to mind for you? Um, 
you know, we just make sure we do dinner together. We make sure that we take a photo in front of the tree. That's a must, yeah. right? We want to make sure we have that. Yeah. And then we'll just add stuff depending on where we are because we, we hop around a lot. You know, if we're in a snowy climate. Oh, you travel. Oh, open, so yeah. I'll take the kids skiing on Christmas. Oh, that's awesome. You know, it's opening day. Well, that I'm sounds a like hunter. a tradition. I like, hunt- is- I like hunting yeah. on Christmas Day oh, right. if I'm allowed. Yeah. It's usually really rare yeah. that that happens. Yeah, man. But that's not really a tradition. That's just, you know, I, I try to, you know, take the kids sledding or, you know, go on a walk. Yeah. A lot of stuff's closed down. You know, my mom, my wife and her, her mom, when she was alive, they used to go to a movie mm-hmm. every Christmas. Mm-hmm. They would go see a matinee oh, yeah. or a film. Yeah. And I like that idea too that's with the sweet. kids. I think that's fun. My sister, uh, my, my sister lives in Texas, one of my sisters, and she watches uh, the movie Elf on Christmas Day every year. And her oldest is 18. So they've watched Elf probably since it came out. Let me ask you a question, okay? This is a deep question. Let me tell you a stat first, a dark stat, and then ask you a positive question. Are you ready? Now, I found some stats from, um, from holiday season 2021, all right? This is only two years ago. And listen to these stats, all right? It's kind of, kind of, kind of darker. When it comes to what's on America's agenda for seasonal activities and travel, COVID nineteen remains a factor. Seven in ten respondents said that they will see less family and less friends than they never normally do. All right, it makes sense, right? So seventy percent of people during COVID Christmas said we're yeah, not sad. going to gather, we're not mm-hmm. going to see people. It's not going to be the same. And almost 30% of respondents will travel out of town to see family and friends with the remainder not feeling comfortable of doing that yet. So now let's put this in our kids' shoes and our, put our minds in our kids' shoes, if that makes sense. That means our kids, whether they were children, like ages five, six, or seven, prime time, you know, early, early memory stage, or they were tweens, which is those are probably my most memorable Christmases when I was tw- a tween or you're a teenager, you know, going through life, our kids had, I'll use a strong word. I'll use the word robbed. It's a strong word. I don't mean to offend anybody with that word, but for some of our kids, they had these years kind of robbed from them, right? It wasn't like a typical experience. You with me because of the COVID thing? I am. Right? Yeah. Especially if you couldn't be with family and you were with them, that was a tradition for you for years. Yeah. So now for, I would think close to a hundred percent of families. I have one friend who's still COVID sensitive. It's back to normal, right? We're back to normal. We're free. Do what we want. You with me? Right? Oh yeah. Okay. So now here's the question. Who in your mind, and there's no right or wrong question of my, I'll pick two of my daughters, which of my two daughters you think this is going to be a more important Christmas for them as far as lifelong memories. Ready? Daughter, my third daughter, who's seven years old, right? So she's in second grade, seven, right? Do you remember, you probably remember what you, you could probably go back and even remember what you remember. got your second, I, third grade year. That's prime time holiday season, like memories, right? Or my 18 year old daughter who has moved out of the house and she's not with us as much. And now she's coming back to the family and this is her first Christmas not living in the house. Now, of these two children, who do you think is gonna it's more it's gonna be more memorable, more important holiday experience? What are your, your opinion? Your answer wants to go to the kid because holidays for the kid, the youngest, is so memorable. But they've had many of those. This is the first time your eighteen year old is away and coming back. So I would assume maybe it's gonna be more memorable for your oldest. Mm, I don't know the answer. We're just guessing. I don't either. Let's say that my house now let's throw an X factor, okay? Let's say my house um is gonna on Christmas Day is gonna be filled with a lot of um negative relatives. They're gonna be abusing alcohol, acting obnoxious, they're gonna be fighting about Trump versus Biden, they're gonna be arguing about you know, uh, international wars and politics, and it's going to be negative. How do you think my 18 year old is going to respond to that? Here she is well, out of the house. And as she comes back looking to have a nice family experience, yeah. and that's what she experiences. Yeah. People abusing alcohol, arguing, they're bratty kids. I'm just trying to, I mean, unfortunately when we have these big events, you can kind of sum it up with 
one event, right? Let's say you're at Christmas for a week, and there was that one day you were sledding. Your sister launched off the, you know, almost broke her wrist, but then she fell and was giggling, and it was the best day ever. <laughs> you're like, man, that was a great holiday, yeah. right? But it was two weeks long, and that's the only thing you remember. Mm. So now your daughter's coming back, and let's say she's there for four or five days. Yeah. She has a great time, and then there's this one family member that's causing all these problems. That's going to get imprinted into their mind and yeah. make you look back and say, that was a terrible right. Christmas, or that was a terrible Thanksgiving. I remember one year, I think I was tw I was 20 maybe 21, my mom, she brought her new boyfriend to Christmas. And I can, I've never talked about this ever, but ever. But I realize now I was not okay with this. I did not like this. I might have, I probably told her nicely, like, please don't do that again. I don't want no freaking weirdo named Ron freaking coming, sitting there in uh, that my, my mom's rocking chair with his legs crossed, you know, <laughs> drinking freaking tea on my Christmas and I'm 20 years old. I want to freaking have a nice family with my, with my sister and sisters and my mom. I don't want no dummy there, but this is why I think we, you know, and she never saw the guy after that ever. Like I never saw the dude again. Right. He broke up with yeah. that loser. I just hate dude, this Dude, That's guy. why family drama is going to probably what I would think behind the list of stressful moments for the holidays, even though it's not on the actual list you found, I think family dynamics Cause a lot of problems. Could be a new girlfriend right. for the sibling, yeah. you know, could be anything. Where this is why tip number three is what Jordan and I wrote is I want us to be mind have mindful conversations and mindful behaviors during the holiday right. seasons. And I don't so why is, if, why do we write that, man? Because if you maybe this is important for someone listening who you are that person. You're the one who was going to the family trip mm -hmm. and usually are the one who drinks all too much. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're the one that's going to go visit family and you think, oh, I've been looking at my niece, the way she lives her lifestyle, mm -hmm. and I'm going to try and correct her during this trip. Yeah. Don't do that. Right. Hold your tongue and just enjoy the moment. Don't be the person that everyone's going to remember th that you're the one who caused a bad holiday season. Yeah. Just enjoy the – my thought process is – Enjoy the time with each other right. and don't allow different backgrounds, different yeah. political beliefs come mm -hmm. up in these situations because you're not going to convince anybody in that time anyway. Yeah. You know what I just realized? You're not. You know what the greatest enemy of the holiday season is? It's selfishness. Cole. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> but that's what you Sorry, get. What? That's what if you're selfish, you get coal. Isn't it selfishness? Because we've been told by all these commercials and by all of our programming that the holiday season is about us. It's about consumerism. It's about yeah. making us feel good. Even being with what family you get? makes me feel good. Thinking about our wish list, Amazon with wish list, and like I, I, I it, it, it's so that's the temptation of the holidays is making it about us. And if you I do know. that, then uh, that's bad. So we got to figure out a way to transition that thought process. When you have the entire world telling you one thing, mm -hmm. but the reality is something completely different. I mean, yeah. this world has gone away from what Christmas should be really about, yeah. right? Yeah. The, the history of Thanksgiving, yeah. what, what really went on right. during that time. Why do we eat turkey? Why are we getting the family together? Do you actually sit and be thankful right. for Thanksgiving? That's a tradition yeah. I forgot to bring up. We go around the table and say yeah, what we're we thankful do. for yep. right before Thanksgiving, we, and I love it. We do a little we do a little Bible study on Christmas Day with, as a family and just talk about that and talk about That's great. what Christmas we is need, about and why there's Christ in Christmas. And, giving. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of givers out there, and I, I applaud you. Yeah, they are. But like, we have to teach that to our kids. Yeah, man. Maybe go to a coat drive and say, hey, you know, there are kids out here who don't have coats. Yes. Let's give one of your coats away. Let's, You know what I mean? Like, you got to find a way Embracing. to show everybody that it's not about just consuming. Yeah, I, I think it's good that we're doing this because I think that, uh, you know, with children, more is caught than taught. But what's also true is that we are leaders and we set the tone and we've got to speak up about and teach our kids these things. And I think a lot of parents, I don't think about it. And hopefully this, this podcast episode has brought a lot of mindfulness to you. And here's number four. I'm very passionate about number four tip for how to thrive. Um, and give gifts to yourself during the holiday season. Tip number four would be give less screens and more adventures. 
This is somebody coming with 25 years experience of working with your sons and daughters. And I am begging you, everybody. I am begging you, please resist the temptation to give screens to your children or abuse screens. Or if your children does not have a healthy relationship with screen, well, then resist the temptation to give them more screens. Resist and go back and listen to my previous episodes about about screens or go to my website and look at my screen addiction um, book or take my class on the parent's guide to how to break screen addiction or join my membership. Oh my gosh, my fellow parents, I love you. And I do not want to see you sabotage your family, sabotage your holidays by letting your kids abuse this horrible, horrible drug that is so tempting and is so destructive. Do not let screens ruin your holiday season. Dude, I'm starting a new tradition after you just said that. Okay. No screens at all Mm -hmm. during the holiday. Whether it's just the day or let's say it's Thanksgiving, you get that Thursday, Friday, Mm -hmm. Saturday, Sunday for that four-day stretch. And instead, you say to your kids, I'm going to do this this year. I'll I'll let you know how it goes. We'll talk. Please do. Yeah. I'm going to say, bust out a puzzle, yo. I'll yes, do a puzzle, a right now. puzzle. You want to learn how to play chess? Let's freaking play exactly. chess. Get Battleship. You know man. Let's what? play some cards. I'll play war with you. Yeah. Old school, go fish. Yes. Just be in the same room together, enjoying each other's company. A little go fish, a little checkers, a little live, yeah. watch some movies together, eat. Just be together. You're going to tell you something. This is, this. I'm when I say this, I'm, my heart sinks. It's very sad. Um, on Christmas Day, it's become very clear to me that I have a lot of people that buy things from my website on Christmas Day. And this is very sad. I'm not celebrating this. Um, I have a lot of people that purchase my book, A Parent's Guide to Breaking Screen Addiction, or purchase my my um, class, my Zoom class, pre-recorded on-demand class, a parent's guide to breaking screen addiction on Christmas day. And I say it every year to my family. Now it's like, this is so sad. Like what is going on in these families homes that here we are on Christmas day, parents are buying this right now. Oh, right. You with me? Like what is happening in the house at that moment that made them go and buy it on that day. Mm-hmm. I get it. That is hard, man. That's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking yeah. that they're sitting there on their phone buying a class because probably because their kids are like, they have these healthy expectations. I guess, is that a, is that a word? Is that a term? Healthy beliefs about Christmas day or the holiday day, whatever you celebrate. And right. they want to be together with their kids and their family and their kids are not a part of the process. And they're just living in a fantasy world on a screen. And it's heartbreaking. That's hard. That's hard. And we're all, we've all been there. Um, you just got to be mindful about it and I'll let you know how, what my idea I just came up with. I'll let you know if it works. Yeah, I can tell you right now it's going to be fought, but yeah, I think if both parents can stick to their guns, it can yeah. be good in the long run. Right. Well, here's our last tip I think is maybe the best one is here's a action step. Number five, gift these gifts to yourself during this holiday season. I implore you to say yes and to say no as much as you can. Say yes and a say no. I like that. Can I break it down? Please. What do we say yes to? Yes to family functions. Playing. Yeah, playing. Cutting down Christmas trees. Family dinners. Yeah. Events with healthy cousins. Aunts, uncles. Well, what about staying up late? Yeah, staying up late with your kids. Having yeah. fun. I Maybe. Love it. Maybe uh, getting the the neighbors together. We went to this. I'm pointing at the house right now. Our next door neighbor had an open house, and we went over there. We were there for two hours with other neighbors, and they provided probably three to four hundred dollars worth of food and drink. And they just oh, open wow. house. We went there to we met our neighbors, and we hung out with them. We chatted. We made friends, and we shared stories. and And they were uh, and it was it was so great, right? We might I, we got to do that. I really been, I really want to do that here say yes to that what else should they say yes to before we get to the nose what else oh I, I yeah i was saying um to 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 staying up late um to getting dirty right mm-hmm. go out and get dirty right? so let's say yes to that say yes. Uh, can i go 
you know, ride my bike by myself. Sure. If you, you know, if you feel comfortable with yeah, that, you know, that bike I for think Christmas, giving yeah. them some freedom. Um, I, I'm going to probably say, I'm going to give them a, you know, question like, Hey, what do you guys really want to do this, this holiday season when you're off? Yeah. And I know they're going to say ice skating and I know they're going to say rollerblading mm -hmm. and I'm going to say, yes, yes. I'm gonna say, let's do it. Say yes. And make those investments, even though, you know, you might have to take a loan to take your kids ice skating nowadays. <laughs> yeah, hopefully or not. Or take them bowling. Um, you, uh, but uh, or take them to a holiday movie. Oh my gosh, yeah. movies! But yeah, this Dude. is like time to yeah. invest in in memories. And here's some good things to say no to. Right, say no is by setting good boundaries. You do not have to say yes to every party you go to. You do not have right. to say yes to that third or fourth glass of wine. You can say no to that. You can say no to your kids demand for a, a new app or a new screen or a new right. expensive you can say no she's saying i'm not going to go to this holiday party that stresses you out you can say no like my wife we're she's not going to cook thanksgiving meal this one and she said you could cook and you know what i said i said no because i don't want <laughs> i don't want to either i don't know i'm just yeah. not in the mood now we have in the past, we've done big blowouts, but we both are not, we're not feeling that right now. So say no, right. what are some things you're going to say no to, or you want your wife to say no to, what do you, what else comes up for you? Well, I don't know. I haven't really thought much about Christmas because all of our mind is to this trip I'm talking about over Thanksgiving. And so we've been saying yes to, to that trip. Yep. And I know I'm going to have to work. It can be hard for people who are like on shift work and have to work for holidays. I can't say no to that, yep. but I might say no to a party or two, like you were mentioning, if I'm going to be too tired. Yep. Um, if there's a lot of kids activities and it's driving me crazy, I might say no to that, yeah, depending buddy. on what they have on their schedule. Yeah. But I want to make sure that we have time together. I'm definitely going to say no to the screens. Like you mentioned, I'm mm -hmm. going to try and be a stickler on that yeah. one. Yep. Um, and I, I just want to make sure that I'm, I'm saying yes to the things that are going to be memorable for them. Like mm -hmm. I, my goal right now is to not have each kid open up 10 gifts. Mm -hmm. Even though, so that's going to be something me and my wife are going to have to talk about. Yeah, I want to make sure together, that it's like one or two. But what, yeah, but what if she doesn't, what if she wants to? She's like, what if she doesn't want that? What are you going to do? You're going to say yes? We're going to say no? I can let you know. I mean, yeah. I'm going to say, but my defense is I don't want toys or yeah. gifts that never get used. Yeah. I, I've got stuff in my you said that You that said that, that yeah, you said that didn't stress you out an hour ago. But you said it what frustrates did, you. I was just messing with you right now. Frustrates so does that, you. Yeah. yeah, it frustrates you. Yeah, yeah, it does. And you know what we did? Yeah. We kept some of those toys. Yeah. And we're going to rewrap them and give them to for the birthday. <laughs> we'll use them. I was like, here you go. Right? right. So yeah. it's just, I, I well, I'm going to, yeah. we got to figure that out. Depends on I want to make sure we do something. Yeah. Memorable. You know what? For some of you, this is what you need to hear. You need to hear this, this holiday season, you need to put yourself on a budget. And you need to be wiser. And for some of you, that's not what you need to hear. You need to say, loosen up, chill out, right? Chill out. This is a special time. Be flexible with your kids. Be flexible with your with your partner. It's my wife has taught me so many things. She's my greatest teacher. And we, I would not be who I am. And we would not have the family we have unless it was for her she has brought so much goodness into this family including the holiday season because she just comes with these ideas and she's always been pushing i want to buy this i want to buy that and i was always the guy you know the the, the non-profit youth worker the ex youth pastor like oh with the money the money danielle what about this is a fear and she said just let's just do this this is special and um and so yeah there's that constant balance right of like, constant balance there's that constant balance of like live every day like it's your last yeah and don't do too much to where you're super stressed yeah. you have to find that balance. that balance yeah that balance and you've got to and the thing about balance too is you know what healthy balance is we talk about this ex with uh a lot in our co in our self-care episodes balance is not just about you it's about if you have a spouse you know or a co-parent it's about finding that balance together working together yeah and isn't that what the holidays are about it's about family it's about spirituality it's about growing growing it's about for us that believe in the you know christians like myself and jordan it's about celebrating um jesus and the birth of jesus and god and salvation yeah, and reflecting for forgiveness yeah. reflection it's about slowing down and so uh, and about creating memories and about the most important things in the world you know which is 
family, friends, memories, faith, gratitude, and just enjoying this season because Jordan, we're making a podcast episode as we wrap this up. I want you to know I'm thankful for this moment in time because this moment in time is never is never going to happen again. And this yeah. this Christmas of 2023 is going to come and go and it's never going to repeat itself. My kids are never going to be this age again. So I am thankful for this age and I'm thankful for my current struggles and my pain. And I am thankful for this moment and I'm living in the moment because I'm never going to experience it again. And I'm going to look back on these times and I'm going to miss them. And I'm thankful for them. What are you thankful for? That's good, man. I'm so excited now for the holidays. You got me jacked. <laughs> yeah, man. Let's watch some movies. Let's go yeah. do something fun. Yeah, dude. Let's see. What am I thankful for? Oh, my gosh. I'm thankful for so much. And I, I'm so appreciative that we're able to help so many people in, in what could be a difficult time. Um, I'm so excited and, and thankful for everyone who gets in the spirit, decorates, and enjoys that moment. Because you're right, we only have yeah. so many yeah. years left, right, yeah. with the kids, maybe for ourselves, maybe Same. with our loved one. So we have to appreciate what is coming up. And I'm I'm thankful for my family who travels all across the country to see each other, and they all put in that same effort it's to make so sure that we wonderful. stay close. I'm jealous like of that. that. It's, you're a beautiful family like that. I'm thankful for our listeners, that you trust Jordan and I to to be in your life, to encourage you, to make you laugh, to give you tools. I'm so thankful for you, mom and dads that are listening to this. And if you do want to fo- see more of uh, Jordan's and on family, you can follow us on Instagram and where we share our sh- personal stories, you know, on our Instagram stories. And so uh, see us there and say hi. And if you're listening to this podcast and tell us on Instagram or on TikTok or on YouTube or on Facebook, I have uh, over a half a million followers on Facebook now. So please come and talk with me on those social medias. Tell us what you like. Give us some tips on um, or feedback on what you like about the podcast or what you'd like us to talk about more. And much love to you all.